For number six, we're trying to find area under the standard normal curve. And I'm going to actually start with B here. We're finding the area under the normal curve to the left of Z equals negative 1.58 plus the area to the right of Z equals 2.58. So looking at a visual example here, we want the area to the left of negative 1.58 estimate that's about right here plus the area to the right of 2.58 so estimate about right there so we want this area plus this area and this area is really easy to find in Excel so we'll go do that right away so the area to the left of negative 1.58, we're going to use the standard normal distribution, so equals norm.s. And then we want our data value, so I'll use cell reference there, and we use true. And Excel tells us the area to the left of that data value. So about 5% of the area is to the left of that data value. Now the area to the right of this data value, there's just one extra step. If we equal norm, or if we use equals norm.s distribution, and we use cell reference here, that 99% is actually the area to the left of the data value. Excel always gives us the answer back, the area to the left. So if 99% of it is to the left, well, how much is to the right? We just need to do 100%, so, or so 1 minus the area to the left. So if you're doing area to the right, you always do 1 minus what Excel gives you back. So that's the area to the right. And so the final answer for this problem that we were looking for is the sum of those two areas. So the part to the left there of the first Z value plus the part to the right of the second Z value. Let me slide on over here. And there's your solution. And since I was using cell reference, I can drag these up. Oops. I could drag these up and get my answers for all the other problem, uh, other parts of the problem as well. For number seven, we have a normal distribution. The mean is 50, the standard deviation is seven. And we're trying to find the probability that our random variable is gonna be bigger than 41. So looking at a picture of that, it would be this one right here, where we're trying to find the probability that the random variable is anything bigger than 41. So anywhere in this colored in area. So from that picture, it seems it's a pretty high probability because the only part left off is this little sliver here. So let's figure out that exact probability. I'm going to use Excel. So to the right of 41, I'm going to use the formula normal, so norm.dist, normal distribution. Don't do norm.s for normal, uh, standard normal distribution because this one's not standard. Instead, we need to type in what the mean is and the standard deviation were. So the mean was 50 and the standard deviation is 7. And we always want to use true. Now this is the probability, I'll get a few more decimals on that, this is the probability of being at 41 or less. Remember Excel always by default shows you the probability of being less than the given value. So Excel just gave me this, which is not what we're looking for. We want the probability of being bigger than 41, 41 or greater. All right, so all you need to do is take 100%, take one minus the probability of being less than, and I need to make my cell a little larger. And here is the result of the probability of being anywhere to the right of 41. So it looks like around 90%. For number eight, we have a normal distribution, mean 50, standard deviation 7. 
looking for the probability that our random variable would be in between 35 and 64. So that's this picture here. And then using Excel, so to the left of 35, normal distribution, 35, our means 50, standard deviation 7. And then for 64, the means 50, standard deviation 7, always use true. So Excel is always telling us those probabilities to the left. Whenever you're doing in between two numbers, you calculate them both. And then you just need to do that larger one, subtract off the smaller one. And that's the probability of being that the random variable is in between 64 and 35. For number 9, we have a hybrid car with the mean of 57 miles per gallon. That's pretty good. And the gasoline mileage is approximately normally distributed with the standard deviation of 3.5. And we're going to answer these questions. So the proportion of hybrids that gets over 60 miles per gallon, how are we going to figure that out? We're going to use Excel. So for over 60, we're going to use norm.dist for normal distribution. And then we're going to just type in 60 and then the mean is 57, the standard deviation is 3.5, and we always use true. But what that will give us back is the proportion of hybrids that get 60 or less. Excel always gives us the value or less. So we need to, to get the correct answer, we need to do 100% or 1 minus that value you get when you use the normal.distribution function. So there's the final answer here. And then for less than 52, it's just the one stepper. We're going to type in normal distribution, 52. And then the means 57, standard deviations, 3.5. We use true. And you get less than 52. So the next part said in between 57 or 62. You got to use Excel to find less than for both of them. So the normal distribution, use those formulas. But then you do the bigger result here and subtract off the piece from the or the result from the smaller number so over here I did a bigger result minus a smaller now all that leaves you with is the part in between those two values because you're subtracting off that tail end that's below the smaller value and so that's the probability that a hybrid would be in between those two gas mileage ranges and the last one, the probability a randomly selected hybrid gets less than 46 miles a gallon. For a less than, we just type it in directly, 46. The means 57, standard deviation is 3.5. We use true, and Excel gives us the probability of being less than that given number.